Welcome to the Inside Silverstone podcast, a business-focused podcast covering all things tech, engineering and innovation. Hosted by me, Chris Broom, a huge tech, motorsport and gaming fan, and also the owner of Longhurst, a firm of lifestyle financial planners and independent financial advisors located in Silverstone, Northamptonshire. This is a series of unscripted and unpolished conversations with leading business owners, thought leaders and high-tech talent where we discuss their experiences within the Silverstone business and motorsport region. We will also be asking them to share their knowledge, insight and their thoughts on the future just for you. If you're looking to learn more about the Silverstone high growth region and commercially connect with like-minded peers, you've definitely come to the right place. Welcome to Inside Silverstone. Welcome to the next edition of Inside Silverstone. My name's Chris Broom and I'm your host. Today, I am delighted to welcome back to the show our good friend, Dominic Hopkins from Hewittons. Dominic, welcome to the show. Thank you very much, Chris. Good to see you uh, in these extraordinary times on a very hot day. <laughs> Ridiculously hot day. I've literally just had to close the window for audio purposes and it is now a hot box in here. But, right, so as we're doing, Dominic, and as I explained before, we're doing a COVID catch-up. Uh, with uh, old friends that uh, we've sort of interviewed before, uh, as well as new friends that we're being introduced to. So you obviously came on the show oh, about a year ago or so, um, yeah. well-downloaded episode, um, which was surprising for a solicitor, and I say that with love and <laughs> smile. Um, so that, that must mean that our, our wonderful dear listeners and the communities that we're part of were, were obviously interested to hear what you guys are up to at Hewitson's. And so my first question is a pretty obvious one. You know, how are you personally and family and how's the business and all the partners and all the staff during COVID? Oh, well, there we are. Uh, we could go on for a long time on this. I'll keep, I'll keep the personal level a bit short. Okay. I'm doing fine. As I said to you just before we came on air, um, no, no sickness in the family, which has been good. My wife's just recovering from a, a bit of surgery. But apart from that, all good on the personal side. The business side, Hewitson's, how are we doing? Well, I think as many professional practices, we follow the fortunes of our clients. Uh, and we've got clients who have found this period really challenging uh, and understandably, therefore, some parts of our practice have found a, a drop off of business of some significance. Other parts of the practice are, are working very well, sort of consistently because we've got business clients who this time hasn't really badly affected them massively in their markets wherever their markets might be and then of course you've got on the at the other side uh, we've got some really successful businesses in this period you know you've got IT businesses that are doing some really impressive things out there uh, some businesses that people are now depending more on because of what COVID-19 is and the measures that government have brought in has, has impacted their their markets and so their, their business is in demand. So it's a really mixed picture for a practice like Hewitson's. Mm. Uh, I'm, I'm pleased to say up to a point, our litigation practice, uh, which is the area which I practice in, is being very busy. We've had, we've had a very big year uh, and it continues to do so. Uh, some of the work that we've been doing has continued. It's a continuation of cases that are going through the courts. So the civil courts, have carried on doing what they were doing before. They're already used to doing hearings remotely, but they've been doing more now through videos. Uh, and so hearings are now online, which actually you get some really good things about online hearings. You can uh, access, you can have clients. If I've got a client in New York, for example, uh, you can sit in on the hearing without having to travel over to the UK. So some good, good things going on there. But uh, overall, we know uh, for many businesses, SMEs in particular, this is uh, in certain sectors, this is a really troubling time. And so with those, uh, with those hearings, those virtual hearings, do you think sort of post-COVID they're going to become more common just because of the, the ease, as you've just explained, for people for tra transport and travelling, etc.? It's a really a good point, actually, a really good question. I think judges, uh, I think generally judges like to see you. Mm. Uh, there is something that, uh, that, that judges like to, I don't want to say they impose their authority through their personality, etc. But there's something you do lose from it. But I'm confident that the, 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 the learning that we have had from this period with the online world, uh, there will be more online hearings uh, and uh, particularly, you know, where the parties agree that it's a procedural hearing. It doesn't require 
witness testimony, doesn't mm -hmm. require somebody to be right in front of the judge. Uh, and, and so, yes, I think there will be more online activity within the courts and the justice system. Okay, good. Um, and so from a, so your department's perspective, litigation, you know, I've seen within the FCA, because, you know, we're obviously, my business Longhurst is regulated by the FCA, that there's something going on regarding business interruption yeah, uh, and insurers no, and, and SMEs. So what, what's going on there? Well, that's a really, I think this is a very significant thing for, for many um, small and medium-sized enterprises. SMEs, uh, understandably, have uh, been buying their business insurance and uh, many have had uh, add-on uh, parts of their policies uh, which cover business interruption. Uh, and those, that business interruption insurance will include, for example, notifiable diseases. So if your business is affected by uh, 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 an infection in the locality, uh, then, then you know, public health uh, authorities intervene uh, and that can affect your business, your ability to trade. Uh, and understandably, with COVID-19 coming into play, uh, businesses have looked to their cover, seen their business interruption insurance and made claims. But across the board, the insurance industry has been turning away most of these claims. The vast majority of these claims have been turned away, either because they say, well, the disease wasn't a notifiable disease at the relevant time, which was true because it only became notifiable on the 5th of, uh, 5th of March, um, or because the policy isn't written to deal with pa pandemics. Uh, and so there's been a lot of debate about the content of the wording of policies. And so the FCA, as the regulator of, insur uh, of the insurance industry, uh, insurers, has seen fit to say, well, actually, recognizing the massive effect and significance of this, they put together a package of wordings which they think ought to respond to the situation that we're in and the insurers ought to be respecting. And they brought a test case to the court, which was completed. It's, the hearing was completed a week, a week ago, uh, at the trial of that hearing uh, a week ago. Uh, and a number of the insurers were given an opportunity for those wordings to put their cases to why uh, on the proper construction of the contract, the contract of insurance, the uh, policy shouldn't be responding. And so reasons why it shouldn't be responding. So we've had that. Uh, trial going on uh, through July, and the, the trial hearing was at the back end of July, and now we're waiting for the decision of the High Court. Uh, the, it was a, a serious, serious matter, so there were two important judges, Lord Justice of Appeal, Mr Justice Flo, Lord Justice Flo sat there with Mr Justice Butcher, a High Court judge, and of course we have to anticipate there could be an appeal to the Supreme Court. It's that significant because there's billions of pounds at stake and hundreds and hundreds of, of small and medium sized enterprises, many in our area, many in our region will be affected and waiting importantly for the outcome of this particular judgment. So it is a significant time uh, and, and I think uh, we'll be looking very carefully what the, the judgment says. So. On behalf of a number of my clients, I've been looking and following this very carefully, uh, and certainly uh, I've been suggesting that you know many of your listeners uh, will be interested in in following the outcome of that hearing. Do you have a what's your opinion on it? Do you think which way do you think it's going to sway if you, if you if you have one or can? Well, I think what will happen is because there are quite a number of wordings that the court has been looking at. The court would probably find that some of the wordings ought to be responding and some oughtn't to. Uh, I don't think it's going to be comprehensively one winner uh, or another. I, I suspect they'll be looking at each of the policies in turn. That's what they've been asked to do uh, for the various insurers uh, concerned. Uh, and uh, there have been various intervening parties, so action groups have got involved as well, where certain of the, the insurers have, have got wording which perhaps more obviously than others uh, to be responding. So it's going to be no one winner, I don't think. I suspect it'll be both parties will be looking at the end of the day and saying, well, actually, um, uh, you know, there are some claims that will need to be recognized and some that won't. Um, okay. And obviously so anybody listening to this who um, needs support and advice uh, from a legal perspective, they can obviously come and talk to you. And, uh, Very happy to talk to people about about this particular subject uh, um, uh, and talk about the sort of the implications for the business interruption insurance claim. Yeah, it is it is a significant thing for the commercial world out there. 
Okay. Um, you're also part of SEMLEP, so you're an ambassador for SEMLEP, uh, which is clearly you know, in part with what we were just talking about, so supporting uh, the small, you know, SMEs in the region. Um, so, um, you know, the business interruption situation is clearly a challenge, and so hopefully, you know, that, that will turn positive for, for, for many people. What, what other things can people and business owners be looking at or, and indeed should be doing to potentially promote themselves and to, to, to make themselves more attractive potential customers and clients, for example? Well, that's a good, a good, another good question. I think one of the things that I'm, I'm encouraging businesses to do at the moment is think about, uh, um, you know, getting that little bit ahead, that little bit of extra help, uh, and one of the things that we all love is a good story. We love a good news story. And despite the troubling times that many businesses are going through, we are seeing some fantastic examples of successful businesses making something of nothing, showing innovation, creativity, showing also an awareness of the contribution that they have outside of themselves, but to the wider community. Uh, and there are, uh, and the government is encouraging this, uh, is now encouraging people to think about um, Queens of the Ward for Enterprise. And there are various categories for Queens of the Ward for Enterprise, whether it's for innovation, international trade. The one that the government is quite keen on at the moment, and the one thing that uh, I'm encouraging people to think about is the Promoting Opportunity uh, uh, Award. And uh, in particular, insofar as it helps, uh, looks to, uh, to, to recognize businesses that are doing a lot to improve social mobility. I think that's a really important uh, thing at the current time, particularly as we're seeing that we are going to be seeing some societal changes and people, large numbers of people who are, are going to be out of work for a period and, and, and people who perhaps are losing the opportunities that they might otherwise have. We're going to see disparity in education with people not being able to get the qualifications and opportunities they would like because the education system has gone on into some sort of freeze frame. Yeah. Uh, and so, I think these sorts of things where we're seeing businesses uh, actually making a difference uh, and actually uh, helping uh, the society communities around them or, or basically making a play in the international market. You know, we've got troubling Brexit times ahead, you know, how people are going to um, sort of uh, adjust to a new economic reality. You know, how are they going to be able to exploit the markets? Are they doing so successfully? So now is the time to nominate you can self-nominate as a business. You can go online to the, to the Queen's Award for Enterprise website, web page, and, and complete the forms. Look at the guidance. See what they're looking to recognize. It's a five-year award. If you get an award, it's five years. You get, you get a, 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 a presented by the Lord Lieutenant of the county, depending on which county you're in, uh, and uh, gives you a little bit of a, an edge. It gives confidence to your commercial partners. It gives you a bit of a selling edge out there. But fundamentally, I think what it does is it recognizes the work of your workforce, the people, mm. your employees, your team, to give them at this time in particular, when they need encouragement, they need some sense of recognition for the hard work they're putting in. I think there's a real opportunity now for people to put themselves forward for these sorts of awards. Bravo, and I'll make sure that we include uh, some some web links in the show notes so that so for any 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 SME out there that uh, wants to explore this any further, they can they can do so. So really really good, Dominic. Um, we're going to start wrapping up the interview. As I said, it's a COVID catch up. These are short and sharp. Um, two last questions, if I may. Uh, so the sure. first one is a personal one, actually. So sort of it's, it's 2021. We're in a life post COVID. <laughs> what are you looking forward to doing the most? Well, there are two things I really am missing really badly, apart from seeing friends and, and colleagues in the person, because we do miss something when we're not seeing people in person. But I'm a massive, I love international travel and, and to go out and get, and I have been stuck in my room <laughs> for too long. Yeah. I need to get out. Yeah. So that's one. And the other thing I'm really keen to do, and this is something which I, I think I find most frustrating is, I'm a Welshman. I love singing. I'm in, I'm in a band and things like that. And I'm not able to sing at the moment because we're being told I can't sing at church. I can't. It's, it's so frustrating to be able to sing out. So I'm happy to sing at home. You know, a poor family, you know, they have to put up with me singing at home. But as soon as I can sing, as soon as I can have international travel, that's what I want. Fantastic. That, that's a fantastic response. Well, singer. There we go. Right. Very last question. This is a bit of a stupid one. And uh, I'm not sure if uh, it's going to be relevant for you. We're we going to find out. We're going to find out. So, drum roll. What is 
the king of crisps. This is the king of crisps. Prawn cocktail. What, what brand? What make? Oh, that's a. Oh, that's a. Mm. That's, now that's tricky, actually. What make? I, I, I don't. I, I'm, I'm not going to be drawn on make. I'm afraid. Okay. Prawn cocktail. Good man. No, I do. I love a prawn cocktail crisp. I wasn't sure if you're a crisp person, Dominic. I thought, you know, anyway, oh, yeah. your, your, your taste and, you know, position, I wasn't sure if it, <laughs> it was more, more caviar and uh, champagne, but uh, prawn cocktail. Hello, prawn cocktail over caviar any day. Excellent. Dominic Hopkins, partner at Hewitt's. Thank you so much for coming back on the show. You look really well. Mm -hmm. Glad everything's going well. We'll make sure there's links in the show notes if people want to get in contact with you or find out anything else that they can find you and uh, make contact. Good to see you. Stay safe, Chris. Stay well safe. done. Thanks very much. The Inside Silverstone podcast is produced by the team at Longhurst for the benefit of those with a passion for all things tech, engineering and innovation. For more information, please visit longhurst.co.uk forward slash Inside Silverstone, whilst also remembering to give us a five out of five star rating on iTunes. Please note that neither Chris Broom or Longhurst work for Silverstone Park, Silverstone Circuit or Silverstone Technology Cluster.